Okay, so at the end of our topic on sequences and series, uh, we actually come to a question w about what will happen if we never come to an end. Okay, so if I were to add up terms forever and ever and ever, and I actually never stop, I go all the way to infinity, um, will it actually happen that I approach a specific number, or will I just end up going to infinity? Okay, now these two scenarios um, are described by two different words. Words. The one is converge, so we get convergent series, and we get divergent series, and divergent series. Okay, so what is the difference, and how will I remember the difference? Well, if you think of the word converge, that Conver might remind you of the word conversation. And you and I can have a conversation if we um, have a topic in common or a language in common. We can converse when we have something in common. So convergence means that we are approaching a limit. Approaching a, a common limit. Approaching a limit. Okay, divergent, you might, um, the, 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 the prefix here, diver, might make you think of diverse, different. Okay, so this, this is not approaching a limit. Okay, we are going in different directions or not in any specific direction at all, but the point is we're not approaching a limit. Not approaching a limit. Now let's just go back to the sequences we've looked at so far. If we look at the arithmetic sequence, so the general term Tn is equal to a plus n minus 1 d. If d is not equal to 0, so any numbers, so whether I start with 1 and my next term is 2 and my next term is 3, Three, and this goes on, you can see that uh, the Tn, as n gets bigger and bigger, Tn will also just get bigger and bigger. Every term grows larger and larger. So what's going to happen if I keep on adding all of these terms? I'm just going to keep on adding a larger and larger number. So it's, it's quite obvious, I think, at least to me it is quite obvious, that if I add up all of these terms, I'll just end up going to infinity because the thing I'm adding just keeps on bigger, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, even if d is 0, even if I have any number, let's say minus 1, and I'm adding nothing to the next term, so it's negative 1 and negative 1, but this goes on for all of infinity, yes, the term is reaching a, a, a limit, so in infinity, I'll still just have negative 1. One day in heaven, we'll still just have negative 1. But if I add up all of these terms, negative 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 1, I'm eventually going to get to negative infinity. So I'm also not approaching a limit. I'm just going off for all eternity, but just in negative direction. So the sum, we, we write it like that, the sum of infinity, to infinity, the sum of infinitely n uh, many terms will be infinity. Okay, which is not really a number, it's a concept, it doesn't really mean anything to us. Okay, let's look at the geometric series. Uh, in the geometric sequence, we have a r to the power n minus 1. Now we have two options here. We can either have that r is bigger than 1. Now what that means is that every consecutive term is larger than the previous term. Okay, so um, and or r can be less than negative 1. So here's an example. I can, for example, have 2, 4, 8. Here I'm doubling every term and you can see every term is larger than the term before. 4 is larger than 1. Um, if I were to multiply with one and a half, so let's start with six, and I multiply with one and a half, I'll get nine. If I multiply with one and a half, I get 13.5. If I multiply with one and a half, you see the same pattern? 
each time the consecutive term is larger than the term before which means if I'm going to add up all of these terms it's going to end up going to infinity because every time I'm adding an even bigger number than I used to add okay so the terms the the infinite term is going to be infinity uh, yeah, it's just growing larger and larger and larger even if it's negative numbers so let's take numbers like negative 1 that's multiplied with uh, 4 to make it easier let's multiply with negative 2 so then I get 2 if I multiply that with negative 2 I get negative 4 then if I multiply that with 2 again I get uh, or negative 2 I get 8 okay so what happens if I add up these terms this looks interesting What's going to happen if I add up these terms? Well, negative 1, my S1 will just be negative 1. S2 will be negative 1 plus 2. That will be positive 1. S3 will be 1 minus 4. That's negative 3. S4 will be S3 plus the fourth term. That will be positive 5. Do you notice? First I have a negative answer, then I have a positive answer, then a negative answer, then a positive answer again. But what is what is this infinite sum going to be? Well, we don't really know. We've not been in infinity yet to go and figure out whether it's even going to be positive infinity because it's definitely growing. The, the, the value is larger. We're not sure if it's negative or positive. But it can either be positive or negative. Okay, when I get to heaven, I'll let you know. Okay, then this thing is also divergent. Diverse answers. Divergent series. Okay, so uh, we've now looked at my, um, at R being greater than 1 or R being less than negative 1. So here, for example, it was negative 2. That's less than negative 1. What happens if r is less than 1 and greater than negative 1? So examples of this is, for example, negative a half or uh, 2 over 3 or any fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, like 9 over 10, or, or any something like that, or 0 comma something 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 positive or negative. These will all be examples of uh, constant ratios that are less than 1. So what, what does that mean? Well, that mean, means my consecutive terms are getting smaller. So for example, um, Again, just to make it easy, let's multiply with a half. If I start, no matter what I start with, let's start with 10,000. Then my next term will be 5,000. And my next term, 2,500. And what you'll notice is that eventually, as term 2, uh, sorry, as the, the terms are growing, the, the term that we'll find in infinity will actually be 0. Because it's getting half and half and half and half and half and half and half. If you keep on halving something, eventually you'll get zero. And not in real life, not in actuality, but if you could go into infinity, you'll get to zero. Which means eventually, if we add these things, eventually in infinity, which we'll never get to, we'll add zero. That means we'll actually reach a limit. And this thing will therefore converge. Okay, so let's just quickly summarize. First of all, all arithmetic infinite series diverge. to infinity or negative infinity. Now, for geometric series if R 
is greater than 1 or r is less than negative 1, it will also diverge. Because remember, now consecutive terms are in value, in um, absolute value, they are larger than uh, the previous value. So I'm each time adding or subtracting just a larger and larger number to eventually take me to infinity. However, if my constant ratio is less than 1 or bigger than negative 1, then every consecutive term is in essence or in value or in absolute value smaller than the previous term. So eventually, as it gets smaller, eventually in infinity it will be zero, which means eventually I won't be adding anything, which means eventually the sum will be a value, uh, an, a, a limit, an actual value that I can go and calculate. So then that's when we have convergence. So then it will converge. Sorry, I should put here it will converge. Okay, so in the next video we will look at the at this convergence and, w and 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 just look how can I go and calculate the value that it will actually reach when we get to infinity. So we might never get there, but we can go and calculate what it will be if we could.